Hey, thanks so much for listening to the Ridge Community Church podcast. My name is John. I'm one of the pastors at the Ridge, and our vision is to bring the hope of Jesus into every home. So we want to bring you something hopeful and helpful for your everyday life. Whether you've been following Jesus for a while or you're still trying to figure out exactly what you do believe about God. Now, you'll find on this podcast things that'll help with conversations about marriage and parenting and mental health and work, practical things to help you in your faith journey and a lot more. So whether you're listening to this on your favorite podcast app or you're watching on YouTube, be sure to follow and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the hopeful and helpful conversations. Hey everyone, thanks for listening to this episode of the Ridge Community Church Podcast. I'm excited to share a conversation that, with all of you that I got to have with our Ridge Kids Director of our Oak Creek Franklin campus, Amanda Zins. Amanda and I talk about, well, how do you talk to your kids about the Holy Spirit? It can be a challenging topic to cover, um, but we cover things like how do you share about miracles and what do you do uh, when they ask why sometimes miracles don't happen. We also talk about how do you explain walking with the Spirit, how do you explain the Holy Spirit in general, and a lot more stuff. So I hope you enjoy this conversation that I got to have with Amanda Zins. Hi, Amanda. Thanks for coming on to the Ridge Podcast. Thanks for having me. All right, I have to ask, I know you absolutely love Christmas. And so uh, we haven't quite reached Christmas season yet, I don't think. Um, are you just like right now, are you, are you biding your time until you can finally put up the decorations or are you like already kind of scheming about what you're going to do? I might be scheming, but <laughs> I live with a Grinch. And so, uh, Christmas decorations are not allowed upstairs until after Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, but I have started making Christmas cards. Oh, that's kind of a lengthy process, right? Just a little bit. Okay. And somebody listening to this is like, oh no, they're already talking about Christmas. <laughs> I mean, you have to plan. I did hear it's like seven weekends away. Like there's like seven Fridays till Christmas or something. So if you haven't like even started thinking about Christmas shopping, you might want to get on that boat. <laughs> yeah. There you go. There you go. Uh, well, hey, we are in a, a series called X Factor, which has been all about the Holy Spirit, and uh, which is kind of, even for adults, right, can be a challenging topic if you haven't uh, maybe spent a lot of time thinking about it, or depending on what maybe church background you have, or if you have any church background at all. I feel like it's one of the... Uh, it's one of the aspects of following Jesus that's not necessarily as uh, cut and dry or intuitive as maybe some other pieces, uh, which, I mean, if it's hard for for adults to wrap their minds around it, <laughs> maybe it's a little bit uh, challenging for kids too. Of course, I guess, you know, maybe they get it really easily because sometimes kids are able to like process things much better. But I'm curious, as somebody who works with kids a lot and has kids, uh, what kind of questions do kids usually have or ask about the Holy Spirit? Oh, you get the fun ones. Um, like, is it a ghost? Yeah. <laughs> and then they like, because they were like picturing this like being that's floating around. Um, then you get the, that also comes with the, like, is it watching me? Because they haven't quite understood that it, you know, it's not necessarily a being that's following them around yeah uh, so yeah you get those of like it's a ghost it's like it sees everything yeah <laughs> is it like santa you know <laughs> right and so you think like kids pull into what they know so they've seen um their cartoons they've seen stuff on the internet and so they pull into what they know and they pull into what culture says so Ghosts are very, for them, that's a that's an easy one for them to kind of jump into. And they're like, well, that's what it must be mm. because that's what they can kind of contextualize. So it sounds almost like they're trying to put it in the context they understand, right? And uh, I remember when I was a kid, like it was very easy, very easy to picture Jesus. You know, I got my, my little book that has pictures of him. Okay, I can picture Jesus and God's up in the clouds somewhere. I can picture that, right? Um, and, but the Holy Spirit is like, Never really, like, it's not drawn. He's not, like, referenced as much, honestly, I don't think. And so um, how do you go about the process of, like, explaining and saying, 
hey, actually, it's it's more like this. Um, has there been anything that's been helpful for you? Um, it, some of it is really just um, kind of diving into, especially parts of the Bible, especially like a kid's Bible. Mm -hmm. Certain ones have really good imagery to kind of help you contextualize for kids what it is. And it's really going to be based off of age process. I'm going to have a different conversation with my six-year-old than I would my nine or 13-year-old. Like you can get in a little depth. Um, the older kids, I kind of explain the Holy Spirit as I use air as an example. Mm -hmm. It's not something you see. It's something that you know is there, but it's everywhere. Mm -hmm. And using that has seemed to help them understand that there's not like a one mind that is controlling the Holy Spirit. It's not like, oh, well, he's here now, but he's not over there or he's not with that person. And so using the oxygen one has kind of helped at least my older one understand that it's not the Holy Spirit's not just one location or one like being that's like floating between different followers. He's everywhere and he's with everyone. How how do kids typically respond to that? Like, is it like, oh, okay, now I get it more? Or is it like, do they have any, like, I guess weirdness about that concept? I, I, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I would say you kind of get both. Yeah. Um, especially because there is so little about the Holy Spirit that even any of us know. And so yeah. kids can kind of catch on that we don't quite know everything. And so then they try to um, put into context what they know and what they've heard from adults. And so just being open and honest, be like, you know what? I don't know everything about the Holy Spirit. This is what I think or what I've read from the Bible or whatever. And then explain it to them. And that seems to kind of help. But there is, it can be kind of a weird, I mean, a weird topic. Yeah. Uh, most adults are like, really, there's this being that's floating around helping us. And so kids kind of chew into that one and go, ah, it could be kind of weird. But if you like, we've been exploring um, reading the Bible every night with the kids and the Holy Spirit comes up a lot more in like um, the Old Testament. And so then you can kind of use those stories to help explain to them what they mean contextually of what's going on. Yeah. is you And you mentioned this. I think that's actually really smart, like being able to acknowledge the places where you're like, Ooh, I'm not sure about that and not, um, dismissing the question. You know, I think we've talked about that before, but you're essentially creating a space where it's okay to ask questions, even if you don't have the answer. What do you feel like, how should a parent respond, um, if they don't have an answer to a question about the Holy spirit or maybe even in general, but particularly that I'm just being honest. Um, our kids don't, they have to be shown that it's okay that we don't know everything about our faith. Um, if we show them like, well, we always have an, an answer or, um, we're dismissive of a question that we might not be comfortable answering or don't even know the answer to, then they start to get that idea of that. They can't quite, they can't ask a question if they don't understand something and that their faith is supposed to be useless, always have an answer. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's true of faith. I don't think that's true of anyone in their faith journey. None of us have the, have all of the answers. Yeah. And so if we start treating our kids like, well, I have all the answers and I know everything. If they are in a spot where they're like, I don't know the answer, then they start questioning if their faith is real. Mm. And so if we're honest with them and say, hey, you know what? I don't know that answer, but let's look into it together and try to find the answer together. Mm. And it shows them that faith is always growing and moving and not just a solid thing that stays in one spot. Yeah, I think that just goes, I mean, how you, the example you give, right, and how you interact with hard things in your faith sounds super important. And like when you have like, hey, how do you show your kid how to even ask questions and how to, or no, to ask questions. I'm sure that's very natural <laughs> to know how to ask a question. Uh, but how do you go about answering a question? Um, how do you, oh, let's look at what the Bible says. What do you think that means? Like, I think that's a cool process of showing and teaching and saying, oh, now, like, like you're saying, now when I have a question when I leave the house, now I might have a question when I'm a teenager, um, when I'm 35, whatever, it's like, oh, it's okay. 
this is a moment for me to to look it up and grow my faith rather than run from it. Oh, yeah. Especially um, we know our teens are struggling with what they call Insta perfect right now. It's their filter. Everything's supposed to be perfect and you're not supposed to have a mess or anything that's not answered. And so if we show them that that's not real life, that's not real faith, you can have those questions. Let's explore it together. Let's find out. Uh, I feel like one of the things uh, that maybe helps make it a little bit more practical is talking about, hey, what does the Holy Spirit do? Um, and I think that that, it, it, that can be helpful, right? And we've covered a few things about uh, just the Holy Spirit in our series, whether it's spiritual gifts, miracles. Uh, how do you describe those things uh, in a helpful way to kids? Um, That one is great if you can find examples of things that they see in real life. Um, Because if you start just going like physical examples. So if, um, hey, do you remember when grandma was really, really sick and now grandma's not really sick? Mm -hmm. Um, They'll understand those more than if you start going like, well, this was this huge miracle that happened. And so you kind of use examples that they are personal, like are personal to them, Mm -hmm. but also contextually they can kind of like hone in on because if you start talking about how do you explain to a kid about um, people talking in tongues without completely freaking them out? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. And so you have to kind of, Figure out how you talk to them about how the sp- the Holy Spirit gives people different gifts. Um, sometimes I use the like, um, hey, do you know how um, uh, your teacher gets up in front and she's just a really good teacher. Like you sit there and you're so engaged and like every time she talks, you just are so like you learn so much every time she opens her mouth. Mm-hmm. And then you tie that back into how the Holy Spirit gave people gifts of prophecy or they gave them of teaching or, and so you kind of try to give them, it might not be a complete like, Hey, this, what, this was a gift the Holy Spirit gave them, mm-hmm. or this was a miracle that God performed, but you're giving them context of what that could look like. Mm-hmm. And then if you do have a, a something, Hey, this is a miracle that we've witnessed. Mm-hmm. Then you kind of, talk to them about that but at least you've given them almost like the guidelines of what's in the sandbox of what this could look like yeah in real life i imagine it's also going back to the example thing i imagine it's super helpful if you're able to share hey this is where i believe that god has given me a spiritual gift like Mm -hmm. is doing this and this is where so-and-so is and this is how it looks like for us and um when you believe you'll you have a spiritual gift you know uh, and walking them through, like, I feel like those can be really practical examples. But mm-hmm. I feel like that, like, kids may latch on to certain gifts easier than other ones, right? Like, you're really good at mercy. Like, what? <laughs> like, you're good at forgiving your sibling when they take your toy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, uh, yeah. There may be some that are a little bit more uh, nuanced, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, when it goes to like miracles, uh, I know one of the one of the things I remember is that when I was working with kids, that they would ask a lot, is like, is that well, why didn't? Um, and I mean, that's hard for adults. Of course, it's going to be hard for kids. It, as you're trying to like help your kids understand that hey, miracles are possible, and God does miracles. But what about when He doesn't? Is there a way that you kind of like walk them through those moments? Yes. Um, This one is, this one's a difficult one, Um, especially because it also includes, um, it normally includes grief in there. Um, And we are not a good species at being open to sharing that we're going through grief. (laughs) Mm. Um, We just aren't. Uh, We don't sometimes do it healthy. And so trying to even go into that conversation of a miracle didn't happen, even though we prayed for it. Um, And this is where uh, parenting styles kind of come into play. I don't bubble wrap my kids. Um, 
we have lost lots of family members, close family members um, in the last couple of years. And so they've gone through the grieving process with us as a family. They've seen it. They understand death. Um, and it's really just you have to know what's right for you and your kids and what they can handle. Um, being always an open, healthy spot um, when kind of going into that conversation. Uh, but then when you do sit down and have that conversation, I would say you want to make sure they're in a healthy spot where they are done grieving that loss mm. and that you are a little bit too, because it's really hard. I've been there. I've tried to have the conversation of the miracle didn't happen yeah. and I was still grieving and it was hard mm -hmm. because they will ask questions that you're not either ready to answer mm -hmm. or in a spot that you can actually talk about it without breaking down. And that's hard because your kids love you. And so it's hard for them to see you grieving to that depth when they haven't had it like, it's hard for you to answer that healthy if you haven't finished your processing yet too. But it's really just being open and honest and talking about how, you know, God, it's not that God didn't want to, it's that God had a different plan in place. And again, kids need examples. And so that's when you talk about, hey, remember when you really wanted to do this? And I said, no. Hmm. It's not that I didn't want you to go, like, it's not like I didn't want you to go to, to this birthday party. It's just you were unaware of, of all these other circumstances around that, that that's why you couldn't go. Mm. It's not that I didn't want to. I really wanted you to. But I was aware of the parameters that were happening around that, and I had to say no. Yeah. And so using that as an example, when you start talking about, hey, this is a miracle that we wanted to happen, and it didn't wasn't God saying, I don't love you. It wasn't God saying, I didn't want to do that miracle. It's just, mm -hmm. we are unaware of the parameters that he, he saw everything else and we didn't. Mm. Wow. That's a, I feel like that's a really healthy way of approaching a really hard topic of like, how do you help them understand maybe even a thought process they haven't even gone through before of, cause I feel like for a, like, it's hard to distinguish that maybe the choice that they want isn't the best one for them, right? Uh, until a certain age, and then I think they maybe they learn a little bit, but then they still want to do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Innately, we all want what we all want the things we want, and so it's hard when we don't get the things we want. Um, yeah. But yeah, kids especially. I mean, they are they're pure. They're the most pure version of themselves. They just want what's best. They just want them like everything they could possibly want. They want, even if it's not great for them. Do you think that it would be helpful to have that type of conversation before a, a grief type situation? Like like um, I guess like almost like to help them like process it before those things kind of come into come. I obviously I guess it really depends upon age and where they're at, but uh, yeah. your thoughts on that. And it also, um, cause sometimes you don't, you don't have that opportunity. Sometimes they're quick. Yeah. Um, but if you are going into something that you have that time to do that ahead of time, um, I think would be beneficial for a kid. Um, no one likes surprises. No one likes random, quick um, things that happen. And so if you can kind of give your kids that toolbox ahead of time yeah. so that when they're going through that situation, that not only they, they can use it, but they might actually get to watch you use some of those tools as well mm -hmm. to help kind of go through that whole process of what happens if this miracle doesn't happen. You know, we could probably do an entire uh, episode on just that topic. Uh, <laughs> I mean, maybe we should, yeah. Uh, but uh, just to keep things going with with, with the Holy Spirit, um, we just uh, talked about, well, what does it mean to like the phrase, common phrase, you know, walk by the Spirit um, and walking with God. Uh, 
And I feel like when you talk about it, it's like you're describing it as like you're walking with a person. Like, that makes sense. That kind of is is clear. But I think walking with the spirit is a little bit different. Um, is there a way that you teach kids to listen to like the Holy, like how the Holy Spirit is like kind of prompting and what he's telling you and how to, how to listen to God? You know, that's kind of a, that's such a tricky thing, right? But, um, well, this one's hard because, um, kids innately do not sit still. Um, they are really bad at sitting still <laughs> and being quiet. Uh, yeah. as a mom of three, yeah, they're not really great at being quiet. Um, but, Finding for that, like talking to them about how sometimes that they have that feeling um, is what I will use. Um, Hey, do you know when you're doing something and you have this like feeling in your stomach of I should do this because it's like a good thing to do or I shouldn't do this because it's not good. You tie into that feeling. If you see someone and you're like, I should go open the door for them and you're like innately you're like I should be helpful or I should do this thing to be a better like to be nice or something I go that's a prompting that's that was your like that was the Holy Spirit kind of nudging you of hey this is one of those things like one of those topics that you like you can kind of help with or if it's the um I, there's something about this situation that I felt, Ooh, I need to get myself out of this situation. Mm-hmm. And you can kind of use that to explain, um, kind of listening to the promptings of the Holy spirit. Um, I always tell my kids, it's not about sitting. You don't have to be sitting, um, still, you don't have to be sitting still and being quiet. I go, you got to find for your, you what's yours. Now, my daughter says she loves to swing and she says that's where she feels like she gets to kind of be quiet Mm. and listen because she goes, I'm moving, which kids bodies want to move. But she goes, I'm out there by myself just swinging. Mm. And I said, well, that's a good time to have spend time being quiet and listening to God. Mm. So you don't have to be still because kids aren't built to be still right now. Yeah. And so. I was like, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Swing. And then sometimes just like, see if God's trying to talk to you, like just kind of wait to see. Um, because I think we do a disservice to our kids when we tell them they have to be still and quiet because mm. they can't be. And so find that thing. If that's running, if your kid's a runner, okay. Hey, instead of having music on, instead of listening to something, why don't you try running without something? And try to listen. Try to just see what God might want to talk to you about. Hmm. Well, I always, I, I, oh, go ahead. I always tell them it's kind of like uh, the Holy Spirit's kind of like that invis- invisible friend. Like it's kind of hanging out with you all the time. And so sometimes if you're just busy doing other things, you're not listening. But if you're doing something but not engaging in like conversation or something you can kind of hear that invisible you're a little invisible friend hanging out with you Mm. i think it's i think it's really cool that you mentioned the idea of like what's going to work specifically for them i think we we do this where we like maybe we experience something and it works for us but uh i think it, it maybe it's uh, not very effective if we're like, oh, just because it's worked for me, I know it's going to be worked for you or how it's going to work for you. And and maybe it's even true for like different time periods in your life. Um, but I feel like for, for kids specifically, right, it's like, hey, how do you encourage them to learn the different ways that God might be speaking to them to learn, hey, how, how do you listen to that prompting? Um, and if we have this assumption that, well, I was taught that it has to be in a like a dark room with my eyes closed. It's like that's the only time you can hear God. Um, and for a kid, that probably sounds like the most terrible, boring thing ever. And so all of a sudden there's this association that, oh, what does it mean to follow God? What does it mean to listen to God? Oh, it means being bored. Um, yep. Or that's their like time out. That would be like, I don't want to be in my room by myself. This sounds horrible. Yeah. And I just know it because that's not when I hear God talk to me. Mm. Mine is when I'm on my knees weeding in the garden and I'm just not associating with anything. And I'm just having, I'm doing something with my hands, mm. but my mind isn't occupied. And so it's like, 
you got to know what works for you and it's not going to necessarily work for your kid. Yeah. But we're raising young adults and I think we get caught into the, well, yeah, but they're kids. They are, but they're not you mm-hmm. and they're not your spouse. They're their own version. And so you have to help them find what works for them because God made them that way and he's going to communicate with them in that way. I also think that man, that pays huge dividends even as adult as like learning that, hey, how you experience God can change over time and how like you can figure out what's good for you. And if it works and you're like, oh, actually during this season, this was more helpful for me. Um, and you've almost helped teach them how to like try out different things with connect with God and learning that it can look different. And so I really love that. That's great. Yeah. Um, I, one of the only other things that I would um, mention, you talk about the, the leading of the spirit and um, one of the things that I heard when I was young and it stuck with me is that the more you listen to it, listen to him, the easier it is to listen. And when you ignore it, the harder it becomes to. <laughs> um, and I think that rings true, right? Where it's like, uh, um, and there's this, that, that's that line of like, um, yeah, but, but I think that's some helpful advice that I got when I was little. I was like, okay, if I want to hear some more, I got to practice listening and acting on that prompting. Oh, yeah. And knowing that the first couple of times you do something, you're not going to necessarily hear anything. Yeah. Um, it's like building a muscle. Like you're not a great runner the, the second you run out the gate. And so it's you have to kind of try it. And do intervals, like teach your kid, try something for a couple minutes. And then next time try it for five minutes. And then the next time, like kind of build it. And then after you get to a point, you're like, you know what? I've been doing this for eight or 10 minutes and I'm not hearing anything. Okay. Maybe that's not the one you try, try something else, but building it up into knowing that it's going to take a little time to get comfortable doing it. And I tell kids all the time, it's not like you're like suddenly one day God's going to be like, hello, John, are you listening? It's different. I've only ever, I've only (laughs) had one experience where I actually felt like God was talking to me, like Mm -hmm. hearing verbally conversation once. And I'm not admitting my age, (laughs) but it was, it's a pretty good chunk of time that I've only heard him ever talk to me once. Mm -hmm. So I always tell kids that it's not necessarily going to be a loud, booming voice. It's going to be the little like intuition or the, it's the little nudgings, not the, I mean, we, we do, we go into Hollywood mode and we're expecting the clouds and the, like the light and the loud, booming voice. And that's not necessarily what you're going to get. Yeah. That's really good. Man, is there anything else that you'd just add to this conversation as it goes to like talking to your kids about the Holy Spirit? Um, I would say as parents, be completely okay with not knowing the answer. Mm. Help them find it out. Do it as a family. Find it out together. Um, be honest about your faith with your kids. Um, our kids need to know that their faith is not in like not significant enough because they are asking questions. So be honest about where you're at with your faith, because I feel like that gives the kids an idea of um, realistic, Mm -hmm. realistic faith. Um, And don't, when the kids ask you a question, don't overreact. (laughs) If they ask you and they're like, I don't know about this. It doesn't mean they're questioning their faith. They're just, they're just asking for an answer. They're asking for you to clarify. So don't panic. <laughs> the worst thing you can no do, what. don't panic. Worst thing you can do <laughs> is like freak out and panic because now your child has learned that they are not allowed to ask questions, especially because you don't know the answer. Mm. So don't panic. You got this. <laughs> Trust yourself. <laughs> awesome. Amanda, thank you so much. Thanks for taking the time to kind of walk us through how we can talk to kids about a little more of a challenging topic. So thank you. You're welcome. Well, that was my conversation with Amanda. And 
I want to encourage you, in our show notes, we have some conversation guides that you can find about some of the more challenging things that we talked about, like like grief and how do you respond if something like that happens. That can be really helpful to guide you through conversations with your kids when it can be challenging even for yourself. Um, so uh, I think there's a lot of wisdom in what Amanda was saying about allowing yourself a chance to process the grief before you try to answer tough questions from your kids. Um, about specific elements of that. Uh, Thank you for listening to this episode of The Ridge Podcast. And be sure to rate and review and then follow and subscribe so you don't miss any hopeful and helpful conversations.